Prior to the Neo Geo, SNK's contribution to golf video games was 1988's Lee Trevino's Fighting Golf for the Arcade and NES. For the 9th anniversary of the Neo Geo thread of the Atari Age forums, we will do a double review of the system's contribution to the Lynx with Top Players Golf and Neo Turf Masters. These games were selected for this anniversary video based on the front nine and back nine of an 18-hole golf course. For the front nine, we will start with Top Players Golf. This was a heavyweight for its time, weighing in at 62 megabits. Released on May 23, 1990, it's amongst the earliest releases for the Neo Geo. The footage for Top Players Golf was played in AES mode, as that version does not have a time limit to make your shot, and you don't use credits to continue play. It's also the version I am most accustomed to playing, thus all commentary for this review is based on my experience with that version. The default difficulty in AES mode, which is not adjustable, is the equivalent to MVS difficulty level 2 in the arcade. The difficulty affects the speed of the swing meter. In MVS mode, a hole is forfeited if you fail to finish within a set number of strokes over par. Right. There are no stroke limits in AES mode. In MVS mode, you insert a credit to continue play after each hole, unless you score under par for a hole. Nice birdie. There are two courses to choose from and four golfers to select. As far as I can tell, the golfers mainly differ in shot accuracy, with Jack Staddle being the most accurate. The selection screen nor the manual mention any differences between the golfers. You choose from three play modes, stroke play, match play, and the Nassau game. Now the game is starting. Put the ball on the green in two if you drive straight on this hole. Good birdie champ. Stroke play is a standard 18 hole game which can be played alone or with a friend. Match play can be contested against a friend or the CPU, where the goal is to win each hole by finishing a fewer strokes than your opponent. Strokes over or under par are not tallied in this mode. A player can win a hole before the other player finishes. The difference in holes won are tracked between both players after each hole. Match play can end before 18 holes are played if a player's lead is large enough to make it impossible for his opponent to come back. The Nassau game combines elements of stroke and match play, along with a couple of challenges. Only 9 of the 18 holes are played with a choice of playing the front 9 or back 9, known as the out and in, for the course you select. The challenges are the longest drive contest, which is done on a par 5 hole, and the closest to the pin contest, which is contested on a par 3 hole. At the end of the contest, Point values are assigned to winning these challenges, stroke differential between both competitors, and difference in holes won. If trailing within a certain margin before the start of the ninth hole, a wager can be made to make it a winner-take-all hole. A cutscene of the crowd congratulating the winner is shown after the contest. If you're a novice, then match play and Nassau game are best played against a human opponent, as the CPU is usually on point with their shots. Each hole has obstacles such as bunkers, cliffs, heavy rough trees, and water hazards. In some holes, you will shoot over multiple water hazards to get to the green. Sand traps are strategically placed in front of the green, making it tough to shoot over them to get to the green for birdie or better. Some holes provide a choice of two routes to take to get to the green as per the caddy's advice, with one being a safe route and the other being high risk, usually involving a water hazard. I find the SNK Championship course to be the tougher of the two, as it features more cliffs and intrusive water hazards, especially in the back nine for the latter, as some of those holes turn my score for the course from under par to over par. The toughest hole in the country club course is 17, where a giant sand trap takes up a good portion of that hole. Before you swing, you can select your clubs, toggle through several views of the hole so that you can get an accurate assessment of the layout and direction you should swing, consult your caddy, and view your scorecard. 
You will need to toggle the screen to access the full view map as it is not visible by default. This is my major pet peeve about this game as it slows down the pace of play. Also the location of the pin is not visible in the full map view. Because of this I end up spending more time than necessary to adjust the direction of my shot. Each hole is played against a fixed wind speed which varies between holes, though their directions may differ each time you play. Wind data is displayed before you shoot. Note the movement of the passing clouds. That also cues you in on the wind's direction and speed. Contemporary golf titles such as NES Open, Power Golf, and the NES version of Lee Trevino's Fighting Golf use a two-click method along the swing meter to determine the strength, hook, and slice of a shot. In this game, the swing meter consists of four sections, two for short and long distance straight shots, one for hook, and the other for slice. This makes it easier to execute the shot you want, as I found the timing to land the proper angle of your shot tricky using the two-click system. The long distance hook and slice sections have markers placed, where stopping the meter at that point produces a full swing, providing optimal distance and or curve of the shot. When the swing meter is active, you can cancel it, allowing you to make any adjustments if necessary. Moving up or down on the joystick the moment the club hits the ball, gives the ball a top or back spin, which affects the height of the shot. Giving the ball a back spin makes a chunk of the turf fly off during a shot. Once the shot goes off, you get to see that early Neo Geo scaling of the field when the ball is in the air. After each shot, the recommended club is shown depending on the distance to the pin. I don't always recommend using said club by default. You must take into account if the ball is on the fairway or on rough terrain, the wind, and potential hazards. The wind has a major impact on how the ball is carried. When driving to the green, I may have to use a club that has a driving distance of up to 50 yards different than what is recommended, depending on the wind direction. The timing of nailing the tough shots over or around hazards or through strong winds takes lots of practice as I've bungled my share of those shots. When driving from a long distance, if the ball lands on the green or just in front of the green on the fly, it can make a couple of strong bounces onto and over the green, putting you in a rough spot. You will need to use the right club and amount of power in your shot to get the ball to land further away so that it can make a weaker bounce on the green and roll towards the hole. Once you reach the green, you may need to angle the putt away from the hole depending on the distance and slope of the green as a straight shot isn't a sure thing. Putt for birdie. You can opt to play with a caddy before the start of the game. If you select a caddy, the option to use her is at the lower left corner of the screen. You are taken to a different screen where she explains the strategy to take for the next shot, if any, along with what club to use and the remaining distance to the pin. If you decline that option, you will see the remaining distance to the pin in the same corner. I prefer going without a caddy as her advice doesn't always work when factoring the terrain the ball is in and wind. Plus I prefer to rely on my own instincts. Note the river and pond before the green. Long drive over river makes it easier to reach green on second shot, but be careful. Top Players Golf is known for its abundance of spoken dialogue which was often broken. The caddy verbally describes each hole, the direction of the slope of the green, and offers advice during the hole, though she says the same phrase each time for the latter. The announcer comments on making a good or bad shot, and if you're putting for par or better. Nice par. Top Players Golf has a very mellow soundtrack which fits the nature of the sport. Four tracks are played throughout the course cycling between holes. It's a relaxing way to wind down after a long day or on a lazy Sunday afternoon. Now on to the back nine. Nice birdie. 
For the back nine, we will cover Neo Turf Masters, also known as Big Tournament Golf. This 1996 release 133 megabit title was developed by Nazca, who was also known for developing the first Metal Slug game. Neo Turf Masters is essentially a successor to the major title series, which was developed by Irem, as Nazca consisted of former Irem employees. For example, Neo Turf Masters composer Takushi Hiyamuta worked on Irem titles such as Undercover Cops and Super R-Type. Two major title games were released in arcades, with a modified port of the first game released for the Super Nintendo under the name The Irem Skins Game. The major title series and Neo Turf Masters share similar traits such as course layouts, golfers with different attributes, golfer reactions after each hole, challenges, leaderboards, and the user interface, the last of which makes these games stand out from other golf titles as we will discuss. There's a choice of six golfers, each representing a different country and specialty. They vary in attributes such as driving distance, stroke accuracy, putting, and recovery. For some stats, the higher the rating, the slower the meter moves when you putt or swing, allowing for precise shots. My go-to golfer is Robert Landolt for his accuracy. You choose from stroke or match play, the latter of which can only be contested against a human opponent. In stroke play, you're competing to finish at the top of the leaderboard. Your placement in the standings is tracked after each hole. The difficulty setting affects your chances to reach and maintain first place, thus on a lower setting, you can afford to bogey a few holes and still finish on top. Finishing the course in first place treats you to a scene where you triumphantly raise your trophy. In the Neo Geo CD version, there's a Grand Slam mode which unlocks a fifth course set in Scotland if you win each of the other four courses. Please select your challenging course. There are four courses to select with each one set in different countries. The obstacles and hazards I mentioned in Top Players Golf apply here as well, along with hilltops. For any holes with this terrain feature, you must shoot high or suffer a demoralizing roll downhill. The hole layouts are narrower than the ones in Top Players Golf and are longer, with some holes that are close to and over 700 yards to the pin. On the flip side, there's a par 3 hole that is less than 100 yards to the pin. For some holes, you will shoot over out of bounds sections to land the ball on the fairway or green. I find that trees present a bigger threat to your drive than in top player's golf, thus you must master the hook and slice. The ball bounces strongly along the fairway and weakly on the green. Rough terrain can stop a ball dead in its tracks. Some holes have highly unrealistic layouts. For example, there are very wide canyons and water hazards you must shoot over to get the ball on the fairway or green which is situated on an island or other landmass. Many of the par 3 holes are set up like this. I would assume they travel by helicopter and boat to get across. In some holes you see a golf cart riding along the pavement in the outer perimeter of the hole which is a cool detail. Neo Turf Masters offers a comprehensive, yet easy to use, interface for making your shots. There are two meters you use to determine the strength and height of your shot. The strength meter is selected first. Stopping this meter at the highest point past the 100% mark, as indicated by a glowing meter, gives you maximum drive on your shots. This could add upwards of 40 yards to your shot based on your club's distance, if when aided. The height of your shot is selected afterwards. The height meter has red sections in the outer portions and blue in the middle. The size of the meter and the red and blue sections vary based on club selection. Stopping the meter in the red section denotes a missed shot. You can hook or slice your shot by pressing separate buttons for either one. These buttons can be pressed several times to get a sharper turn on your shot. You are treated to a scenic third-person view of the course with close-range obstacles in clear proximity, allowing you to adjust your shot accordingly. If you rotate the screen, the parallax and line scrolling gives depth to the course view. 
The player's sprites look realistic and combined with the smooth animations of their swing, they have a digitized look. The map of the hole is always visible except for putts. The arrow on the map to guide the desired direction of your shot is long, allowing you to get a precise estimate as to where you want the ball to land. Wind patterns can alter that. The views of the course and the interface allows players to play through the game at a faster pace than in top players golf. I don't often have to second guess myself when it comes to planning my shots. At the same time, it's easy to rush your shot which can cause you to make a mistake on the tougher holes with hilltops or water hazards. It's happened to me many times. There's a time limit to swing or else you're penalized one stroke. After your initial drive, shot accuracy depends on the club you use based on the distance to the pin and the terrain the ball is in. If you opt for a stronger club than what is recommended, then the size and blue portion of the height meter becomes gradually smaller with the pointer speed increasing, reducing the chances of a successful and accurate shot. This is most evident when you're in sand traps and shallow water. If you land the ball in the ladder, you can shoot from that point or take the one stroke penalty and reshoot from your previous spot. Choosing the first option gives you a very slim chance to land the shot due to the immense speed and minimal section of the height meter. This varies based on the golfer you selected. When the ball is on the green, you are shown a recommended stopping point on the putting meter. Depending on the grain of the grass, which is the direction the grass blades grow, and if there are mounds, you may need to stop the meter before or after that point and angle the shot away from the hole. I find putting to be the most challenging aspect of this game. The tricky mounts and grain direction can break you if you're shooting for first place. I've had moments of utter disbelief when I made highly improbable putts. If you don't finish a hole within three shots over par, then you forfeit the hole and are penalized with an extra stroke. The pin placement on a given hole varies each time you play, which can affect whether or not you need to drive the ball over or around trees and sand traps to get to the green, and it impacts the difficulty of a putt once the ball is on the green. For example, in the latter, in a specific hole you may have to putt onto or over mounds to get to the hole in one playing, but not in another. The change in pin placement feature was carried over from the major title series. Wind speed and direction differs for each hole every time you play, and they change during the course of a hole. These two factors will affect the outcome of each round you play, providing varied gameplay. One credit allows you to play three holes which work like lives. Each hole you play uses up one from your remaining stock, but you can earn them back or lose more based on how you shoot. A par uses up one hole without an additional reward or penalty. A birdie gives you back a hole. An eagle gives you back two holes. A double eagle, also known as an albatross, and a hole in one wins you back three holes. A bogey or worse deducts an additional hole, reducing the minimum number of holes you play on one credit. You can win holes to play by beating the standard set for the longest drive and closest to the pin contests, which come up throughout the course. These days this information is irrelevant as you can credit feed unless you want to complete the course in one credit as a personal goal. To do this, you must score a birdie or better on nearly every hole. A big part of Neo Turf Master's character comes from its soundtrack which is upbeat and energetic. Each course is played to a different tune. There's plenty of speech that is dictated with excitement from the announcer during the selection screens to the reporter chiming in on your progress throughout the course and when you reach the green. The crowd claps, cheers, or groans when you make good or bad shots, and if you went over or under par for the hole. Your golfer expresses his excitement, indifference, or frustration after each hole. The sound of the swing of the club smacking the ball is very pleasing. It's reminiscent of the hard smack of the ball in the Baseball Stars games. That small detail makes a difference in the extreme presentation of this game. Bingo! Flies for, buddy. 
If you read reviews on Neo Turf Masters and Top Players Golf, the former is universally praised and the latter has a mixed reception. While I think Neo Turf Masters is the superior title, Top Players Golf has its share of merits. Despite the broken dialogue, I'm impressed that they put so much speech in the game from that era. The shooting and putting mechanics were more forgiving than other golf titles during that time, yet accuracy is still key. I find putting to be easy as I've made putts despite thinking that I over or undershot the putt. I've had success in landing the ball in the hole on chip shots which felt good. The user interface and course views make Neo Turf Masters the easier title, but don't get too comfortable. There are moments where you will be frustrated. I find playing through the courses to be a tale of two halves. The front nine holes ease you in with simple layouts, allowing you to rack up lots of birdies. The back nine is where you'll be put to the test, as the hazard placements and strong winds test your judgment. As I near the end, I have to maintain my composure so that I can hang on to first place, especially if I suffer a late bogey. All of this adds to the tension and excitement of the game. Top Players Golf is suited for the golf enthusiast who wants a relaxing, slower paced experience, thus it may not appeal to casual fans of the sport or the sports genre, but give it a try. The game was better suited for consoles than the arcade. If you own an MVS unit, then Neo Turf Masters is a must-own title. The appeal of this game is that it's easy to play for a sport that's difficult to play and not accessible to many people. Neo Turf Masters is my all-time favorite sports title. It's been included in compilations and via digital distribution for many consoles, including the PSP, which is the system I play it on the most outside of the MVS. I hope you enjoyed this double review video, and I'll catch you next time. You have finished the final round. Nice par.